Hey, thanks for checking out yourlocalnote.com. My name is Mike Stringer, joined by RJ McKay. Uh, we built this site for to make a community where you can go discover new bands and artists and keep up to date with them. There's a few ways you can do that. You can download our free iPhone and Android app, and with that you can stream our station 24-7 wherever you are. All you have to do is search YLN at their respective stores. It's absolutely free. And also if you wanna if you're looking for a show to go to this week or on the weekend, check out our upcoming shows page. It's loaded with shows from the bands that we've featured on this site. And this week's featured podcast, we welcome back the Trestles, who are here to talk about their latest album, American Midnight. So let's begin with the first track off that album. It's called Motel Bible. We've got the Trestles back on yourlocalnote.com. I found a prayer stuffed in a Bible in a motel room on the side of the highway when we were young. Thought the worst was behind us, the only ones to turn coal into diamonds. Motel Bible, they are the Trestles, and this is yourlocalnote.com. Guys, welcome back into the studio. Glad to be back. All Exciting. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, we had you in January of this year. We're going to wrap up 2012 with you guys again. Wow, it's less than a year, really. Yeah, wow. it has been. You guys are the bookends awesome. to our 2012. Uh, first things first, let's uh, refresh our listeners. Uh, introduce yourself and the role you play in the band. Uh, my name's Butch. Uh, I sing, play guitar, and uh, write some of the songs. I am Big Dirty, the Dirt Man. I play lead guitar, do some songwriting, played a little ocarina once. <laughs> uh, Time Bomb Tom, and I'm the uh, drummer. All right, and uh, who are we missing in this? Uh, Mickey Reds uh, is out uh, photographing Machu Picchu right now. Oh, yeah, nice. And, uh, our, our bass player. Extraordinaire, Mr. Fuzz, he lives in Baltimore, could he's, not make it. He's a man of mystery, so, you know, <laughs> his public appearances are rare. All right, so uh, you guys are here to talk about American Midnight. Yes. Uh, you just released this album, and uh, when, let's start at the beginning of this album, because obviously we, uh, last time we had you in, it was American Sunset. Mm -hmm. When did the writing start for American Midnight? Uh, a lot of it was already written. Um, there were some songs that we didn't, uh, have developed enough to put on American Sunset. So a lot of them were cl close calls and almost on Sunset. Yeah. Um, uh, My Brother Called, which is a, the song we're going to hear tonight, um, is one of those songs. It was uh, kind of on the borderline. It wasn't quite there yet. Um, mm -hmm. So we were. it was in our live set. We were playing it for a year. Um, 
So some of it, and some of the songs were older uh, songs. Uh, Motel Bible was kind of an older idea. Um, the other night is an older song. Uh, so really, and nothing but your love was actually was was demoed for American Sunset. So the really the only brand new songs that we had on this were Autumn and uh, Rock and Roll Dreams Come True. Um, so we had, and even we ended up tracking more for this album. So we have some extra stuff left over for for next time. So okay, and and this is part of a trilogy ultimately. Yes. So with the trilogy, what's the common? Is there a common theme throughout uh, the first two, and then possibly with the third? I started to. I don't think we set out really for common themes, but it's mm-hmm. become that way. Like they're each they're each a six pack of songs. There's a uh, there's one song on each of them that's kind of really raw with just uh, Butch and like an acoustic guitar, me doing a little something. So they kind of they're, they're getting to have a theme. I, I think, yeah, I, I don't think we had a, a a definite idea, but a lot of the ideas of. Um, and they've uh, evolved themselves. Family and, um, you know, friendship and trust and all the big major issues. He said... Growing up sucks. Yeah, growing up sucks. <laughs> that's, that's what um, I say the theme There's a been. lot of death, um, <laughs> you know. But then again, those those themes kind of always permeate the stuff I write sure. about. So it's not necessarily... It's just a little bit more concentrated, I think. Okay. Yeah. So have you been performing all year in, the, in these songs? You've just been fine-tuning um, up until the time you got in the studio? Uh, yeah, um, like I said, some of them were kind of later, were developed a little bit later, but we've been playing Nothing But Your Love, we've been playing My Brother Called Live, and then once we got Rock and Roll Dreams down, it was definitely, that became a big centerpiece of our live show and of the record. Let's go back a little bit to um, Motel Bible. Let's talk about that song specifically, Butch. What, what was that song about? Uh, that song um, is written about uh, a note that I found in a Motel Bible Okay. After a show we played in like 2007, 2008 at Bloomsburg University, mm-hmm. and it was their uh, block party that they have for right. the kids and the frats, and uh, <laughs> it, a riot broke out. A real shit show. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was uh, the riot police came and, and. Oh wow! So we were looking through the Bible, and was uh, that after the show or during? The show? We well after we played, it, things just started getting. Well, because people wanted you to come back on. That was that's you what know. we tell ourselves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I remember we ended up at the hotel early. It was still daylight. Yeah, it was still daylight. We were like, we watched like the entire draft. We, yeah, we watched the NFL draft. We had the police escort us out of there. Wow. Um. So this there was this note that I found that was a it, it was it was like a four page note written on hotel stationery of basically this person who was just kind of confessing their sins. Really. And uh, I kept it. I don't know what made me keep it. I just I. I just thought it was neat, and then I would still look at, like, whenever I was having, like, a difficult time, I would look at that to kind of know that that's... Someone's worse off than yeah, you. Yeah, maybe that, that that person knows that, like, someone else saw their oh, okay. plight and understood it, so... Okay. Um, but, yeah, I still have it. I keep it in my drawer. It's, Do you really? Yeah, it's... So, uh... <laughs> it's weird. <huh? laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. weird, Butch. I, I, I was trying to think of something nice to say, but I can't. Yeah. That's interesting. Butch. Yeah, that's very yeah. interesting. I, the rest I mean, of the band is looking at you going, oh, yeah. okay. Um, but now, yeah, that's... It, it's an interesting story, though. To, it is. To, to write a, a song about that. Yeah. But it is weird to keep it. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> so, so the writing has just been continual between playing. It's not like you took a time off to to sit down and say, "Okay, we got to write some new music." You're just continuing to do that throughout your uh, playing. Yeah. Well, the first um, before we did before we tracked American Sunset, we took a month and wrote a bunch of songs. Okay. So we had a, a surplus of of stuff to to kind of pick from. Now I'm at the point where I'm writing more new stuff. The reserves are a little tapped out okay. right now. So we have, there's two songs I have finished for the next one, but we haven't even started working on them yet. We're okay. focusing on getting this out right. to everybody. All right, let's go to our second song. It's called uh, My Brother Called. Tell us a little bit about that song. Um, that was a, a, uh, one that we demoed, um, or like I said, around the time of we did American Sunset. Um, again, it's kind of the theme of family and uh, um, uh, true love and 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 being alone and all those wonderful, horrible feelings that Death. we all have. <laughs> There's a lot okay. of... So it's, mean, an, uh, it's an up, uplifting song. It's very... The, the <laughs> actual, like, story behind it is yeah. really personal, and okay. I, I kind of keep that to myself. Um, but uh, it came out It came out great, and... Um, this was this was one of the most fun to record. We got 
Tom, the new drummer here, he's doing backup vocals almost yeah, the that's... entire verse, and they have a nice harmony. And nice. I played pretty much everything with strings I could find in that studio. There's mandolin, 12-string guitar. Wow. Yeah. Lap steel. It's, right. uh, it's very mature for us. Um, <laughs> and uh, you'll hear Tom's angelic, uh, angelic <laughs> voice. Great. Great. Well, looking forward to hearing it. We're going to hear it right now. This is called My Brother Called. Uh, this is uh, The Trestles. Their new album is called American Midnight, and you're listening to YourLocalNote.com. Well, I found my love in the trampled grass, and I didn't know then that it wouldn't last, cause it's all My brother called. The album is American Midnight, and the band we're hanging out with tonight is the Trestles. We're having them back again, which we're happy to uh, have. And uh, as Mike mentioned earlier, we're bookending 2012 with them. We uh, had them in in January, and now we're talking to them at the end of uh, the year because they've got a new album out. Uh, All right, so the new album is uh, put together. Uh, it's written, then you produce it. Self-produced, how did that work this time? Well, I, uh, I defer all, all credit to uh, Big Dirty, who uh, produced the record mm-hmm. and um, played like 75% of the instruments and okay. did a lot of the editing. And uh, We've, We very thoroughly demoed this time around. That's what yeah. was pre- a big change. We pretty much, there's a whole alternate version of this album in just demo, for, like, bedroom demo form okay call it plan b in case the yeah. recording studio burned down or something <laughs> yeah had this one to go back to or if butch died couldn't sing the rest okay um but even like he did you know and you know i i, I injured myself in the studio and i left a lot of the slack to be picked up by him and he did a great job okay um, even doing the design for the the cover for 
putting together this documentary they were doing as part of our Kickstarter package and Very everything. Nice. So I give him a total round of applause, and I think we should give you get to see the Motel Bible give... note in that documentary. Yes, okay. <laughs> you get to see the actual <laughs> note. When is that coming out? Well, we're sending it. Uh, it's done. We're sending it out to the Kickstarter folks. We plan to. Uh, Put it up and stream it for free on the website, thetrestles.com. Very cool. Next, uh, coming gonna, soon, next couple weeks. Let us know because we want to promote that for you guys. And, and they're going to get the they're going to get the first look because the, cool. We had such a good out turnout of donors. Uh, thanks to you and your local note. Well, thank you. Um, Appreciate that helping us uh, get that last minute push. Good Kickstarter, so, uh, a, a good program for you guys. Oh, uh, it was great. It was a total. Um, it was a, a surprise. I think we were kind of. We didn't think we were going to get <laughs> enough to, you know, you got to make your project goal. Right. This was kind of out of left field, but we saw some of our friends and other bands had done it, and we mm-hmm. we wanted to do the, the post-production part right, and we got to. We, we went over. We ended up with 1,800. 1,800. Thank, we, thank you very much, Kickstarter supporters. Yeah, we did. Um, it, it turned out great, and we actually ended up making the majority of that in, like, the last 24 hours, which is so nerve-wracking. Okay. When, because the whole thing with that is if you don't make your goal, you don't get any of the money. No, I know. So um, we had had, it was like the Thursday before it was supposed to close on Saturday, and we were at like $400. We're like, uh. How, and, and did you do any extra push? Did you make calls? Oh, we I went. Mean, how do you, how, we were out there do? with sandwich boards, and, you know, <laughs> we, were, we were calling up Grandma and saying, hey, Grandma, you know, we need some money. Um, uh-huh. And then, you know, Twitter was a big help um, getting that out. Paul Jackson from MMR, uh, who's been a big supporter of nice. us. Nice. Tweeted it to all his followers, Good. and um, a lot of people picked up on it, and it really helped us. And um, Plus so, his dad, the entire Jacaro family. Yeah, the, <laughs> our, our rhythm section really pulled through, man. They, <laughs> they, did. they came through. The, so Kickstarter is is a wor- worthwhile endeavor for local bands because the big the big issue is is coming up with money to record your songs. Yeah, and our, our whole thing was that we, we wanted to say, you know, the record's done. You're not paying for our record. We paid right. for the record ourselves. We just want to get it mixed, mastered properly, get it produced nicely, as you can see these wonderful yeah, packages the here. the album looks great. Um, so uh, that really helped, and we got to work with uh, Mike Tarzia, who's an amazing engineer. Okay. Um, and uh, he really just made everything just, every, it just, you know, sounds so full, um, and uh, it was definitely definitely worth doing. I would recommend using Kickstarter to anyone who's got a, a project. All right, in the studio with these songs that you had demoed earlier with American Sunset. So you've had them for a while. Did anything change while you were in the studio? Any directions of these songs? Um, you you played a ton of different instruments. You said you probably added some while you were recording in that process. There was a few. There was stuff here and there, but like um, the first set of demo. That's kind of it's usually Butch or me or someone with just maybe acoustic, and then yeah. the next round was kind of arrangement focused. It would be sometimes me alone with one of them, new bass player, Fuzz. We did a lot. So that was a lot of the arranging and then Butch would come over. And so it's it was actually pretty similar to those demos, but there was some uh, some fun stuff. And Butch, I remember a game running out once with an Ebo. It was like, play yeah. Ebo on this right here. <laughs> yeah. And that was one of the coolest parts of Motel Bible, background big. Uh, we call them whale sounds, crazy whale sounds. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were, pretty, we were pretty well prepared. But then as always, you get in there and, you know, I broke my hand in the process. How'd you do that? Punching a door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, you know, you have setbacks, you know. There's times where, you know, we... Uh, it was a mill. It used to be a, it's a big steel door. Yeah. Ooh. It was, um, you know, we lost some of the files. We had to redo oh, some geez. stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, Call it the Curse of America at Midnight. Yeah, we're like, it's every around every corner, there's some, like, you know, horrible thing that happens. It's just bad luck. Um we were finishing up the record with, with Tarzi at his house and during the hurricane, that so-called hurricane, and power went out. We thought we lost everything total right there, but yeah. oh, man. he had backup and stuff. Again. Yeah, it was uh, it was just, you know, that's the stuff we you don't prepare for. two broken hands after that. Right. <laughs> you, you, you can be as, we were, and we were really prepared. Like, we knew what parts we were going to do, we knew what instruments we were going to use and stuff, and then you get into the actual technical process of making a record, and anything that can go wrong goes wrong. Right. Um. So, but you deal with it, and, you know, it's... Actually, you know, I think last time we talked about when we made American Sunset, how much fun we had. This is not really fun, not a very really? fun record to make, but it was Stressful. an important record to make. And when you hear, um, like we really, I think we, I think this is our best record. And uh, I think a lot of times all that bad luck and those bad situations actually make 
you know, make you tougher and make your music better. Do you think the reason that it wasn't as fun as the first is because you you put more pressure on yourselves? Uh, oh yeah, because Definitely. you had the first album and you know, like you said, it was fun. And then after going through that process, you probably learned a whole bunch of stuff. Now you got the second album, and it's like, okay, now we we want to make it better. One, you want to make it better. Uh, two, um, you want to, uh, I guess, get through the process quicker. Definitely. I remember uh, after Butch broke his hand and things were tense in the studio, I remember our recording engineer Dan sat us down and had one of those putting too much pressure on yourself kind of speeches. But yeah, we mellowed a little bit after that, <laughs> you know, with the broken bones and whatnot. But, yeah. you um, know. I, and it's the second part of a trilogy. We were talking about the second piece of the trilogy is always the darkest one. You know, this is the, the Empire Strikes Back or the, oh, okay. the two right. towers of the American trilogy. So, um and all, all the, the these songs are all they're all very personal and and um, you know everyone I guess believes in the songs enough that we were willing to do all these you know you know drive down to Philly in a hurricane to finish the last little bit sure. of work because it's just it it became like I, I think it became bigger than us which is what you want good art to be I think so um, now who did uh, most of the writing the lyrically for this album I did you did yeah okay. he, he co-wrote a, a couple um, songs lyrically as well okay and the, and the music side of it was mostly collaborative yeah I mean we'll I'll come to the band with an idea but I let them just we can we play around with it and usually a lot of jam and see where it goes you know yeah. okay. practice and rehearsal a lot besides uh, the producers and the engineers any outside influences that helped you along the way in recording this album I, I, I'm a big believer in music being like a total escapism for people. Right. And um, uh, I think for, for both of us, we uh, uh, Big Dirty and I have our own like personal stuff going on. And we've always used the band as kind of like a filter for that um, to not only like talk about it, but just to get through it. Um, so um, and, and just our own desire to like want to make this great record and try right. to you know, outdo ourselves. We always try to, you always get better. That's the whole, if you just keep making the same record over and over again, like, I mean, there's some people who can pull that off and, and do it. I don't think we'd ever be satisfied doing that. Right. Okay. Let's go to the third song. Uh, it's called Rock and Roll Dreams Come True. Yeah. What can you tell us about that song? Uh, that's the song I broke my hand on. All right. Um, and then there's a vocal part that I ended up doing, uh, what was the total? 49, Andrew. I did 49 takes of this one vocal and I couldn't get it. And, uh, I hauled off and punched the door and broke two bones in my hand. Um, we only canceled one show, though. <laughs> nice. There might just, have been a little whiskey involved that yeah, day. There might have been a little, <laughs> little whiskey. Um, and uh, we, we, kept, we kept trucking. Um, and uh, this, this song is kind of, it kind of is what we were just talking about, that, that escapism of, right. of rock and roll. Um, this is my favorite tune on the record here. Um, it's just about, I think, the first, it's, break, it's broken up into two, halves essentially and the first half is kind of um i guess me thinking of myself when i was younger and and when you're playing in a band when you're like 16 and how that's gonna be hey, i'm gonna do that you yeah. know and then you know things change and you get more mature and you still try to do that because you love it and then the second half is kind of me reflecting back on on that there's a you know a line in there that says uh i'm ashamed of the things i did but you can't blame me i was just a kid yeah so it's kind of um uh, I don't know. It's it's it, my younger self and myself right now, kind of talking about everything that that I got from playing music, and how everything is kind of like rock and roll. Like I said, it's escapism, but it's also kind of a lie. You know what I mean? Like there's the rock and roll kind of makes young kids promises that they can't keep. So yeah, well, I mean, you're doing a pretty good job of keeping that dream alive. We are. We try. We believe in rock and roll. It's what we're here to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a it's a calling, and with any calling, there are sacrifices. Yeah. that you got to make. Now, Big Dirty, what makes this song specifically uh, one of your favorites? I like the I like the lyrics a lot, and I like uh, where Butch went with them. It's kind of it's kind of all over, but you kind of got a lot of thinking, and d you know, I know what they're about specifically. Okay, so okay. I was going to ask you personal if you, any er interpretation on your own that you did on your own. Yeah, I mean, he also really did almost join the carnival too. That's one of my favorite lines. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, and he says "you betcha" right before my guitar solo. <laughs> Big fan of that part. Okay, got it. <laughs> It's like, you know, I love putting, uh, uh, you know, I, lo I like putting 
really earnest lyrics over like a real sleazy like Rolling Stones riff. Yeah. And I did almost join the carnival, but that's not really a great story because I didn't actually do it, you know? So the carnival, I guess, is like, you know, rock and roll. Okay. You know? Welcome to the so rock and roll carnival, <laughs> the Trestles. Right. Although that might be confused with like Juggalos might get confused with <laughs> no, that. We don't want the Juggalos. We don't want the Juggalos to be mad at us. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to that song now. It's called Rock and Roll Dreams Come True. We've welcomed back the Trestles here on YourLocalMoment.com.
That's rock and roll dreams come true. They are the Trestles, and this is yourlocalnote.com. Uh, you released uh, this album in November last month, mm-hmm. and uh, you had your record release show. Yes. How did that go? It's always nerve wracking. It's never as many records as 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 we've made. I still get really really nervous, like the week before. Like disc makers is gonna burn down or like so something so we're gonna get gathering everything, getting it ready. We're gonna to get, get all out. these CDs and they're right. not gonna work or sure. like something horrible is gonna happen. But as soon as we get actually to the show, it's always really and I get very sentimental about about that, you know, because we originally were gonna just play one show, and now really? we're like six records deep. You okay, know? <laughs> so, so it's, at the very start. Yeah, so it's uh, I always like to take that time to reflect, but it went really well. It was fun, um, you know. It's nice to see like the loyal. We have, you know, our our fans are very loyal to us, and they they and they get really excited and they'll buy us whiskey, which I nice. really <laughs> like a lot. Good. And the artwork came out great on uh, on the album. Who uh, did the artwork? Mr. Mickey Red. Mickey did did the artwork. Yeah, the, uh, there's a photo on the front there and the inside layout. Mm-hmm. Back's a picture of us, so he couldn't have taken that. But yeah. everything else, <laughs> it's a. Uh, I had to lay it out because every graphic designer we know screwed us over. <laughs> Screw graphic designers <laughs> as a profession. <laughs> They're logos. That's all you do. All right, we're just, sorry. We're a little. We're a little bit. Sorry, right. I'm just kidding. I love you, graphic designers. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's an amazing uh, artist and. And this the uh, the cowboy and Indian cover definitely fit the the theme of uh, the album. So um, and uh, and people will be able to get the physical copy of this album so they can check out all the artwork uh, through your website. Yeah, well, you can go to uh, the trestles.bandcamp.com, which is uh, our Bandcamp site where you can download all of our albums. Um, American Sunset is still always free to download. Um, and you can buy all of our records for five bucks. Um, and you can get the physical copy of American Midnight for ten dollars, and we will mail it to your door. And um, we're also going to set it up so you can buy it through our website, thetrestles.com, dot com, which is uh, we were surprised was available. If you ever run into me, I, I carry them on me, taped. Yeah, and if you see heart. us, we will have uh, we will have copies to sell you and come to shows. And all right, and and, and we've been talking off the air. You've got a story about royalties. Yeah, well, you know, um, I, we're. I like to call us a nonprofit band. Okay, you know, we're like a, you know, that's um, how my career has been. Right. Um, <laughs> so I was going on. I, I went onto my ASCAP um, uh, website to, you know, register the new titles, and I saw that I was. I had, his ASCAP's had, called "I Write Better Songs Than You." It's called "I Write Better Songs Than You." I wrote, I came up with that when I was young. <laughs> It's like, you know, like we talked about with Rock and Roll Dreams. It was so, the, the young. So is there something the old uh, you is saying to the young you? Yeah. You, know, you, you probably shouldn't have done now that. Now I'm stuck with that. For, <laughs> I'm stuck with that publishing company forever. Um, but uh, I went on there and I noticed that we had a positive balance, which I had never seen before. It was 48 cents. Nice. Um, it was all for the song Wolves, which is the first song off right. of our last record. And it's all from Germany, Denmark, uh, and the Netherlands. You're rocking Europe. Yeah, uh, I want to know like in what context this was used though, because it doesn't specify. Like it was just like a, you got money. I mean, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe Hasselhoff is covering like a <laughs> German language version of Wolves somewhere, but uh, that would be awesome. But, Come you know, on, that's, and that's it's like, Hasselhoff. And that was like, I was like, we made it. <laughs> you know, I want him to send me a check. It's probably more to have him cut me the check than it would right to actually yeah, worth it. You, you know. Still, yeah. I would even sell them, uh, send them a, a stamp address, an envelope. I'd tell them, I'd send them five bucks just to have the right. check. Well, it's funny because I used to when I was like exactly like, like when I was younger, I used to get the statements, mm-hmm. and they were always said zero. And I was like, one day I'm gonna hang this up on the wall <laughs> next to my million dollar royalty statement, and then I just kept throwing them out because he kept saying zero. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, very good. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's just recap a little bit. Uh, someone wants to come out and see your shows. Your your fans obviously know what to expect from you guys. But yes. uh, there's always new people out there. Uh, what can they expect from uh, the Trestles uh, when they hit the stage? I think the live show has always been one of our strongest our strongest attributes on mm-hmm. this record, which actually sounds very good. But yeah. Okay. Just high energy, high emotion, double guitars. Sometimes. I have a double guitar <laughs> when it's working. Nice. Yeah. We got uh, we got new bass player, new drummer. It's uh, I think it's a tighter band. 
Nice. Tom's now bringing to the table backup vocals. I think we're playing our best live shows yet. Fantastic. Lots of sweat. Um, <laughs> lots of scarves. Bandanas. Bandanas and scarves and um, uh, whiskey. No, no punching of, of doors. <laughs> no, no, that's not, you know, I mean. Put yeah. you a little tip for next time. Kick. You can always play your guitar with a True. broken toe or something. But you wouldn't believe how many people, like, would be like, yeah, I did that. You know, like everyone, every guy has had some bonehead injury like that. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But, yeah. Um, but I did go up. We did do it. We, we got, like I said, we only canceled one show. That's cool. And then we went and did a show in Atlantic City where I, it's always hard for me to not, because I don't know what to do with my hands, you know, and I, especially when I only have one. Right. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's how much, that's how important we take our live show. Okay. I will go up with a broken hand and Very cool. still put on a show for That's me. good. And just real quickly again, where can people get uh, the uh, American Midnight uh, LP? Well, we can go to, you can go to uh, thetrestles.com and uh, that'll have all the links to uh, the Bandcamp site and to our SoundCloud. And we encourage, you know, people to, you know, download American Sunset. We're keeping it free, you know, download it, give it to your friends, you know, just we appreciate you sharing our music, um, uh, but we'd really like you to buy a copy of this record. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, the new album is called American Midnight. The band is The Trestles. Uh, but we're going to wrap things up here with a Christmas song. Yeah, it's oh. an exclusive. Um, nice. Yeah, this is the first time anyone will be hearing uh, this song. We're releasing this song um, on Christmas Eve, actually. Okay. Uh, as a, uh, a free download. Uh, on our Bandcamp site to mm-hmm. our fans and friends and people who've supported us over hey, the thank year. Thank you during the holidays. Thank you. A um, little extra for the, the Kickstarter people. Um, this is a song we tracked during the American Midnight Sessions and just didn't really fit the uh, the theme. Uh, as you'll hear, it's a little bit more of a sleazy kind of rocker. <laughs> okay. Um, but you're can, you're classifying it now as a Christmas song. Right. How? Because uh, it's called Thoughtless Gift. Okay. And uh, and that's the only reference to Christmas is that it's a gift. Just the other night, uh, Mickey Reds was laying down some jingle bells on it. So yeah. <laughs> there were jingle bells. Um, and the chorus is, is very, I think, a very sentimental Christmas chorus. It goes, uh, "Here's your thoughtless gift. I put no effort into it." <laughs> so it's also kind of a little, uh, you know, middle finger kind of song too so would just bu- <laughs> just buying gift cards for all my nieces and nephews is that, is that classified as a thoughtless gift i'd be happy with those gifts rj <laughs> if, you know if, with if the, it's like with the cash. pro shops or something and they don't not really you know what i mean no, it's something no, that they would... no no it's something they can use oh obviously. yeah then that's fine no gift okay. cards are great all right yeah. getting a little nervous no, here, you're guys. good you know, you're making me feel bad <laughs> my mind it was the candle i buy for every relative that's, that's the thoughtless gift yeah <laughs> yeah but you know what Older relatives love candles. They go over very well, you know. It's, so it's not that thoughtless. <laughs> it's funny, my my uh, every you know the last record we released around Christmas time, and this is where we, it's you know around the holiday season. My brother always buys like five copies. I'm like, you're gonna give this away to everybody for Christmas, aren't you? I'm like, that's my idea. That's what I do when I can't think of any ideas. I give them our our record, and that's you know, that's excellent. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Again, thank you for coming in. Really appreciate it. Great seeing you. Well, thank you very much for all the promotion you guys have done for us in the past year, especially during the Kickstarter. You guys were very, very helpful to us. Good, yes. good. And we, so. we uh, plan to uh, continue working with you guys, and yeah. uh, hopefully in the future we can uh, sponsor a show. So, yeah. And if I could uh, say that you guys definitely do put your money where your mouth is when it comes to supporting local music. So very cool. definitely thank appreciate doing. that. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate that. All right. Uh, once again, next week we'll have a brand new podcast here on your local note, uh, dot com, and we're going to wrap this up uh, this song is going to be released on christmas eve it's called thoughtless gifts the band is the trestles and once again thanks uh, guys thank you so much for joining us uh and also want to quickly remind you you can contact us uh, at uh, contact at your local note.com and our text number is uh, 612-502-6614. Text us a message about uh, the site and also about the podcast. Again, uh, we'll have a new one next week. This is your localnote.com wrapping it up with the Trestles and their Christmas song, Thoughtless Gifts. Well, you think you're so clever.